Mr. President, yesterday, day before yesterday, it was reported that two of our colleagues, Senator Sinema and Tillis, are working together on a potential immigration package. And though I want to know more details about what they are considering, I want to thank them for showing this kind of initiative on this important issue. I believe we must pass immigration reform legislation before the end of the year. And the members of the Senate shouldn't leave home, leave for home and holidays until we take a vote to reform our broken immigration system. Now I know some people at home may be wondering why. What's the urgency? Why do it now? Well, we first may have an opportunity, and I hope we do. But it could be the last opportunity for a long time. It's been more than 35 years since Congress has enacted a bill to reform our immigration system. With all of the attention paid on the issue of immigration and our borders, it is hard to imagine how a Congress can be critical of the fact that the situation is deteriorated and not take action for 35 years. That is shameful. Our failure to act on immigration hurts everyone from hospitals in my state of Illinois struggling to find doctors and nurses to asylum seekers fleeing violence and oppression. And there's one group of people in particular who've been left behind, dreamers. These young people who are in American in every way except for the paperwork. We all know the dreamers have made a difference in our state. They're young people brought to the United States by their parents, grew up here, thought they had a future here, but find they're undocumented. Many of them were brought here as babies, and they've grown up alongside our own kids, pledged allegiance to the same American flag in their classrooms every morning. A few weeks ago, I had a chance to welcome some of these dreamers to Washington. As always, I was amazed by these young people. And above all, I was amazed by their passion to give back to the only home they've ever known, the United States of America. One of these I want to show you a photo of today is Eddie Rivera. He's a freshman at Dominican University in my home state of Illinois. He's studying to become a nurse. Over the years, I've come to the floor of the Senate to tell the stories of people just like Eddie, to show what's at stake when we consider the DREAM Act. Eddie's story is the 131st Dreamer story I've told on the Senate floor. You see, Eddie's family is originally from Honduras, and back there his mother was an attorney. And while you think that's a stable profession in Honduras, it was actually a liability. She received death threats because of her work, and it was out of fear for her young son's life that she sought refuge in America. Eddie's family moved a lot when he was growing up. They struggled to get by, but they came to rely on one another for support. When his grandmother was diagnosed with dementia, Eddie and his mom became her full-time caregivers. He would sit by his grandmother's side day by day, feeding her, praying for her, holding her hand. Sadly, his grandmother passed away in December of 2019. But it was this personal life experience, caring for his grandmother, that inspired Eddie to pursue a career in medicine and nursing. So when the COVID pandemic hit in 2020, he answered the call for duty. He was hired to assist the nursing staff in a COVID unit of a hospital in North Carolina. In this role, he tried to provide the same loving care to his patients that he once provided to his grandmother. And in the future, it's Eddie's hope that he can obtain his nursing degree and work at a retirement home, one where people can, quote, spend the rest of their lives living in dignity in a loving community, respecting them, appreciating them for all they've given to society. So ask yourself a very basic question, which every senator should ask. Would America be better if Eddie Rivera were deported to Honduras, a country he barely remembers? Or would our nation be better to have Eddie here among our ranks, the ranks of healthcare professionals who make such a difference in their lives? And what about the more than 200,000 DACA recipients who also work on the front lines of the pandemic? Doctors, nurses, paramedics. Would we truly be better without them? Of course not. We need dreamers like Eddie, and we need to act on their behalf this month. In October, the Fifth Circuit returned a case to the lower court to determine whether DACA, which has protected 800,000 dreamers since 2012, will remain the law of the land. 
So unless Congress acts in the next few days to protect DACA recipients, this program could end even as soon as next year. And what does that mean for those currently, 800,000 currently protected by DACA? Two things. They are subject to deportation at any moment, and they no longer have the legal right to work in the hospitals and clinics and businesses across America. If that happens, an average of 1,000 DACA recipients would lose their jobs each week in health care, education, and other sectors of our economy where we expect serious shortages. Look, I'm under no illusions about what it takes to pass an immigration package in a matter of two weeks or a few days. I know many of our Republican colleagues have their own priorities, and I'm willing to sit down and make sensible compromises to bring order to our border. But we need to move. We need to act. Because, as I mentioned, this could be the last chance in a long time. The incoming Republican House majority has already declared that they will not allow a vote on any immigration measure during the next Congress. It will be the same dynamic we saw in 2013 when we passed an immigration bill here in the Senate only to see it die in the House. Let's not repeat the same mistake. To my Republican colleagues, I say this. If you care about improving border security or helping address worker shortages, this is our last chance to do it. Let's give every dreamer in this country the peace of mind they deserve heading into the holiday season. And let's prove to the American people that we are, make, we are capable of making tough decisions when the situation demands it. Mr. President, I yield the floor.